Hello, this is Kade, and this is the last day of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo of 2950. Which of course means it's the best in show day, which means the four ships that won the poll got their nice shiny new skin with white, black and gold on it, or yellow. And also apparently their cockpit glasses also have been tinted yellow. Overall, I will say it's for all of the skins that they have released for these kind of things, this is by far the best looking. It's a really striking color combination and it just looks really, really cool. So if you want to get a ship with uh, this kind of a paint job and you have one of these, then you can consider changing it over. Downstairs we have availability where you can buy some of the armors that are available in game and also most of the weapons, but none of the attachments or magazines. So you still need to look up where you can buy the uh, ammunition and attachments for them so you can actually you know, use them. So yeah, here you have some Arctic uh, armors on show. It's like, you know, the usual stuff. They they do need to work on more of these things, but I've got a feeling that they're waiting for stuff uh, before they release a lot more armors, but who knows. On the other end, it's all uh, desert-style armors. And, of course, there's a lot more different types in game. Like, personally, I'm running around here in some black medium armor. But here they apparently wanted to have this uh, selection, so here you have the well, desert-esque colored armors. Over here you have all of the rentals, so every ship that's currently flyable you can currently rent from here as well uh, for in-game uh, currency, so it will cost quite a fair bit I think for some of the larger ships, but let's take a quick look I never rent really things Oh no wait, they're apparently they're, che they're free, so you can try them for free So yeah, um, by all means grab these ships that are currently for rentable and try them out to just try them out, or you know, if you want to be smart and you don't have uh, normally ships that can earn your credits, this could be a great time to get some rental ships and make some credits uh, for a couple of days while you can. So, as for the ships, you know, for the entire show, my thoughts in general is like it's been a fairly good show. I like the new layout here. Uh, your old guns, by the way. I like the new layout of these halls. They, have, uh, they feel like a proper show floor hall, which the um, Arc Cold Bonds never really felt like to me. And this really looks proper. Beyond that, you know, lots of good ships available. We of course have the two new arrivals in the form of the Nomad being a decent choice for a tier 2 starter. And the Perseus of course being the gunship, but for that I released a uh, dedicated video earlier today. So you can look that one up. That should... Uh, I've been told the audio on that one is a bit low, uh, I will try to fix it for the next one. On this one it will probably be loud enough, but there's going to be a lot more echo. It's just a problem in this apartment, like it's concrete, concrete, concrete. And I can't really uh, put up sound dampening materials everywhere, so I need to you know, be a bit creative with the recording and then adjust it in editing later. But these videos I'm doing here for the show are all just live recordings. Uh, so this is recorded live and going straight to YouTube. Well, yeah, that was the uh, first video, so but still worth watching, I think. Uh, go over the history of that ship, uh, the use factor of what it will be doing in the first, and just the overall design. And I think of the entire show floor, that one has been the one that has most people uh, quite excited that I know, but a lot of people I know are quite into the large ships, and not so much in the smaller ones. Of course, we also had the arrival of the Mercury Star Runner, uh, which was really, really hotly anticipated, but that was, of course, a ship we knew that was coming. And it was actually already expected for a uh, earlier patch for 3.11, so it, it coming around here was actually a little bit delayed. And I do think that that stole the show a little bit from the Nomad, which is a bit regretful, but well, so be it. Um, of course, we have uh, some of the limited ships that are being crashing the site throughout the week. Yeah, it happens. It's an F5 war. You're still probably going to lose it against bots. I still don't like how it's being held. But I you know, don't really see another option. The only option that I had is like you could do like an auction system, but it probably has a lot of potential issues on its own record. So yeah, I can see why they don't want to do that. Maybe in the future they can find a way to make these sales go more normal. Some people, of course, wonder why, and I kind of understand they still want to limit... Um, the amount of certain ships to be in the first just for uh, law reasons as well like if you have a ship that's supposed to be fairly rare you don't want to have on day one suddenly have like you know 20,000 of those things flying around because that would make a whole lot of sense 
That said, some ships being hull limited makes a bit less sense to me, like the Polaris, for example. It's meant to be produced in large numbers so that they can arm militias and stuff like that, so that we can fight the Vandal. So, why is it hull limited? Uh, I don't really know. The other thing that more people are getting, of course, uh, wind of now is because they're doing these uh, war bond CCU upgrades, which is means for which you can get um, LTI on ships as well, fairly cheap. So if you got like a, you buy for credits one ship, then you upgrade it to another, uh, and you can get them with the LTI. A good example people did was with the, you go from the Crusader Era series, which has a value of 220, and you upgrade it to a Star Runner, which has a war bond value of 225. So you select a warbond upgrade and then you get LTI on it, but you only spend five dollars. And also people like if you do that, you can go from a small ship to one of the larger ships and actually pay what the roughly the original um, pledge price was. So this is something more and more people uh, are slowly picking up on. I wonder if CNG will put a stop to it at some point. I actually hope instead of putting a stop to it, it will just you know be like okay, maybe we should just adjust pricing or just make the whole damn thing easier or like even just sell the bloody LTI for five bucks like I maintain it doesn't have a lot of value CRG maintains doesn't have a lot of value and there are just quite a few reasons why it doesn't have because all it only covers the standard equipment most of the time you'll be upgrading equipment so you need additional assurance anyway and install citizen you know, your equipment actually wears out this is something I mentioned uh, I believe in the Persis video or maybe one of the other ones upcoming like equipment wears out, including your ship, so they will lose value over time. This is a unique thing in Star Citizen, because in most MMOs, like you know, if, if you're playing, uh, say, World of Warcraft, and uh, oh, my armor takes damage, I click repair a defender guy, and it's as good as new. And that's not going to be the case here in Star Citizen. Things will, will be wearing out, so they will start to lose value over time. So that's something to keep in mind, and also why in LTI is not as big of a deal as. People like to make it out. It is, of course, just a nice token to have on there. And really, it's one of the original backers. Like, they say, like, oh, yeah, we want it to be a reward for the original backers or now for that or that. It's like, just give it to everyone and be done with it, really. It's not worth anybody's time and hassle to worry about all of this LTI or not nonsense. But, of course, the main reason why we're talking the CCU patch, you can do like that. You can get for... The, you're talking Warbond stuff here, so you're paying new fresh money. But you can actually get chips substantially cheaper than they would normally. Sometimes it might take a little patience because you need to wait for sales to, for certain CCUs to become available. Right now, of course, with uh, the IAE, pretty much everything that could be available is available, with the exception, of course, of limited chips and the really large chips that are just not available through CCUs. Well, yeah, that was uh, the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. I think it was. Uh, quite a good one for this year lots of ships and I also used it to uh, decide like oh let's make a bit more content uh, for the YouTubes while I'm at it so uh, probably gonna be launching the weekly series come Friday because I simply won't have the time to record it edit it for Monday and so it has to be I'll have to push it to Friday because the week is otherwise quite filled with uh, some stuff that needs to be handled so with that, uh, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you also enjoyed the uh, Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, and uh, I'll see you around next time.